Hello everybody, BubblesZest here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4, where everything's made up and the war score doesn't matter. In today's video, we're going to be doing a guide to the achievement, this time it will stick. So, let's get started. First things first, research slot is kind of electronics, industry, and so on. For sieves, it's just going to be meal spam. Back to mills and dockyards though, it's going to be weapons and convoy spam. The army, let's gather it up and break it up into some equal stacks. Going to convert the tanks over to infantry for now, just keep the stockpile safe. And with this first army group, we're going to park it on the Polish border. Next up, let's gather up and exercise the air force. Press shift K so they exercise and then stop once they reach level 3. And of course, let's make an intelligence agency, it's always useful to have one. And that is pretty much all of our prep out of the way. So all that's left to do now is our focus, the path of Marxism and Leninism, go to speed 5, and begin. And now we're going to upgrade our intelligence agency for a second spy and for cryptology. And with our first focus done, we're now going to be working our way down to NKVD primacy. We now have 50 political power, so let's justify on Poland. 250 days? Alright. Right, let's begin to break that German and Italian ciphers and send our spy to Germany. And we'll take that 5 free war support from the Montreux Convention. And by the 4th, Stalin is concerned about factionalism and political paranoia begins. Oh well, not much we could do about that. The good thing we'll get an NKVD primacy out of the way now because it increases his paranoia by 20. And now we have to choose which way we're going, the centre, the left or the right. And I think it's pretty obvious which path I'm going to be going with. Yep, the right. It is still my favourite. Our opposition has begun, now let's bring up the need for policy changes. For purge events we can afford to take most of them. The main ones we don't want are things that take away our org, like the purge of the junior officer corps. And now we're going to organise uprisings in the country. Does that mean? Yes it does. We're going to be doing a Soviet coup run today. As many of you will probably know, I made a video at the beginning of the year talking about why you shouldn't do the coup, and I still stand by that video. However, we haven't done a full run with the Soviet coup, so I think it could be interesting. And hey, it beats me cheese in the Civil War for the 17th time. Our spy is now at 50% intel network, so let's set them to quiet intel network. Us doing the coup is also why we haven't set up a base or anything like that. Doing the coup means that we just shouldn't need to do it. 4 o'clock, Spanish Civil War begins. Let's send Mark and Popoff and his six mountaineers to help them. It doesn't matter whether or not they win or not, we're just here for XP. We're also going to send some air volunteers because we can. We're going to put them into northeastern Iberia because that's usually the most contested zone. Anyway, we also have over 50% war support, so let's go to war economy. Now yes, we could eventually just go straight to the new economic policy, but that's literally years away. We may as well go to war economy now. Anyway, we've now organised our uprisings. Let's create some clandestine cells. And this is what organising uprisings do. They create these mass protest events. If you can afford letting them protest, you probably should. But since they can really increase our paranoia, you might want to do the alternative. The annoying thing is that takes away our political power. And our justification on Poland is ready. Before I forget though, let's assign the rest of the Air Force to the army. There we go. Right, this shouldn't take too long. Go on aggressive, let's do this. Really, it's just breaking this line that will be the most fun. But if you find gaps, take advantage of them, try and make encirclements. It'll all work out. Oh, could I try and encircle all of Poland's army? I'm gonna try. And now, it's time for the big one. Undermine Stalin's authority. Extra weekly paranoia. Oh, it's going to be fun, isn't it? Come on, come on! And Poland has been encircled. Multiple times, actually. It's a good thing that the purge events are currently broken, because I'm not getting rid of Popov. And there goes Poland. Let's take everything. Even their tiny fleet. Perfect. And back to fallback line. 
And poor Paul, because in that we kept you alive, you're going back to Spain. I know, I didn't really have to do that, but I wanted to. And yes, we're working on garrisons. I have operations and garrisons set to max priority. That will deal with them. It's a good thing that the first trial is about to happen, because I can let them protest and then kick down paranoia again. Perfect. So brief hit 99, let them protest, and done. Anyway. Now let's do some operations. We're going to be doing co-op governments on Germany. The bottom two spies, commence when ready, automatically repeat. We need at least two or three collabs on Germany. And now it's time for us to plan for the coup. Sorry Air Force Generals, guess it's your time. But hey, that kicked down our paranoia nice and well. Oh, I hate conspiracy among civil servants. Look at that, so little PP gain. Alright, let's get your Goda on board. If you're wondering, the difference between your Goda and Yezov is this. Your Goda takes 60 days to sway, Yezov takes 90. It doesn't really make a difference, honestly. It takes 140 days to do Descent in the Party and Coup d'etat. Honestly, I'm surprised this event took this long to show up. No, we're not going to purge your Goda. And we're going to do satisfactory production reports now. That's too close. Our paranoia was 90 and 100. Anyway, it's time. Let's eliminate Stalin and begin our coup d'etat. And you might be thinking, but Bubbles, you didn't do infiltrate the NKVD. Won't that help you? No. <laughs> no, it won't. Here's a little secret that Hoyfield doesn't tell you about. The coup is hard-coded. What that means is, the game has already decided whether or not the coup will succeed or not. It doesn't matter what you do, when you load in on January 1st, 1936, the game has already decided for you. I don't like it, but that's just the way things are right now. We got lucky this time. Stalin is gone, and Beria is back. The leader of the Beria boys himself is here. And yes, we'll also see Spain's gold. <laughs> Something about getting this event is just really ironic. Should we get rid of him? There's really no reason to keep your Goda around. I'm sorry man, you made it this far, but Barrier wants you gone. And our coup was a complete success. So, who should lead us? It should be Bukharin, I think. We've not done him for a while. And here he is. 18th of August, 1937, a good coup run, and now we can actually get started. Next focus, the common turn. And now we're also going to build a load of supply hubs in Poland. When we eventually go after Germany, supply here won't be great, so we may as well build quite a few hubs to help. There we go. Got Luca, got a new job. And now it's their military advisors to Spain. More XP. I really like XP. We now have 115 XP, so it's time for probably the maddest thing we're going to do in this run. Band Doctrine and Change to Superior Firepower. And Big Encirclement. Hmm, what should we do now? Oh, I know, the enemies of the states. Huh. The Spanish have done expand Soviet aid, so we can send two more mountaineers. Very well. We're now going to expand the Agiprop and Collectivist Propaganda. Both will give us some pretty nice benefits. 135 political power, limited conscription. Well, that's not how I expected it to be done, but I have now just turned Madrid into, into a massive encirclement. Activating transport as the Sibyl of the Red Army. Get those supply hubs done quicker. I'll follow that up with accomplishing a high yield. Okay, that's enough of that. Let's do Mo Plan, Cohesion First, and Rehabilitate the Military to get this Red Army up to spec. It's finally time to expand this Red Army. The amount of divisions we have are good, but we plan to defeat Germany requires overwhelming amounts of manpower. So, Division Designer, Create Empty, New, Infantry Battalions, Infantry, Save. We're going to train up 102 of these. And there they all go. But it's pretty clear we're not going to be using these divisions. Nope. So, let's make our ideal template. 
and artillery and engineers. There we go, a nice 21 width. Even give it a new icon. And let's change them all over to that. This is why we've still been spamming guns this whole time. Sure, we have a bit of a deficit, but only one that lasts for 64 days. Let's also do that to these cavalry as well. There we go, a nice standardized template. And exercise to at least level 2. And for a bonus, I have just taken out the anarchists. Madrid finally has an offensive in it, so let's smash it. Oh, so many encircled divisions, and some of them Axis divisions too. This will unintentionally help us later. Wow. Let's look at those casualties. Wow. Let's finish this. They can't hold us back anymore. Just need to snipe Oviedo, Bilbao, and Acaronia. Again. Wow, we've destroyed all their volunteers. They have nothing left. Death before surrender. How about realism? The Republicans have won. This is funny. When we did the Soviet intervention in Spain video, I said I might do a version where we only do it with volunteers. Didn't get around to it, but I did it here. Oh well, I'll take a free puppet. And let's immediately make it a fraternal republic. It should be high enough for that. There we go. People's Republic of Spain with Generico. Well done, Popov. You've done so well. Look at him. He'll make for an excellent field marshal, I think. And you know what? That's your reward. You're promoted. I was going to use Bluka for that, but nah. Popov's the man. Even made him the infantry expert. And look at these mountaineers. Six of them are all veterans. Wow. The Soviet Union they came back to isn't even led by Stalin anymore. Imagine explaining all of this to them. The army's now back up to spec, so let's do Baltic security. And we'll follow that up with claims in Baltic. Our gun problem is pretty much done, so we're going to shift around our production. We have a massive artillery problem now. So we'll keep 10 factories on weapons, but put the rest into artillery. Right, let's change 6 divisions into tanks. Why not? We can afford it. And there we go. At this point, I don't have any specific focuses I need you to do. So, do whatever focuses you feel like you need. For instance, I'm going to do the common soul for an extra agiprop slot. And immediately, we're going to annex Estonia and Latvia. And they both submit. Good. And this is why we did it. Our stockpiles will blow up. There we go, like 30,000 free guns. And yeah, I also noticed the support equipment situation, so let's improve that. 15. And Germany has just claimed Memel, so we can now finally annex Lithuania. And Lithuania folds. And even more equipment for us. How oh, nice. And Germany has just declared war on the Netherlands. Which might sound weird. Because that's around Maginot, and that's months earlier than they're meant to be doing it. What's happened is, Germany has bypassed Danziger War, and that completely breaks with Germany's AI planning. So they'll do around Maginot months early. Which is good for us. Let's finally activate our Intel network. Alright, the Benelux has pretty much fallen, and we can't allow that to continue. If Germany takes France, it's going to make it a lot harder for us to take them down. So it's time to get involved. Take claim state. Memel. We have a claim on Memel thanks to the claims in Baltic. They still held it at the time. Anyway, here's the plan. Two armies will take East Prussia. While everyone else will be on the main front against Germany. We have so many more units than them, we should just be able to overwhelm them. And with our collabs, we only need to take something like Berlin and another state or two, and Germany will fall. Look at the horde. Made sure to hire Alexander down here for extra DRR. The DRR will be very useful. Remember, everyone has to be on aggressive now. Right, just occasions ready. Not all of our units are in position. 
Don't think it will matter. Are we ready? I think we're ready. Let's do this. Immediately break Cypher. Let's go. Wherever we see a breakout, we're going to try and exploit it. Oh, we've got a nice breakout there. Let's keep going. The last thing we need is to get stuck. I've been stuck several times before doing stuff like this. Don't need it to happen again. And I almost forgot. Let's do desperate measures. We're allowed to do it at this moment. Good, Konigsberg is completely cut off. And done. Get back on the front. Right, I'm happy to force attack my way into setting. Break that cipher again. Alright, so it looks like the offensive into Shetin is slowing down, so let's do a naval invasion around Kiel. We really just need to extend this little front of ours. And to be honest, we can afford to take an army or two out of it. Don't need to attrition it that badly. Still, good start. Although not if you're the Allies, because the Allies are being the Allies. Oh dear, this probably won't work. If I had a force attack, it probably would have. Looks like we're about to get shed in though. Good, good. And Germany has just declared war on Czechoslovakia. Thank goodness. What's happened here is Germany's unfair to Czechoslovakia, and the Czech said no. Good, let's get their military access and expand into them. And yeah, before I forget, Hungary's involved in this too. So now's the time to go. Germany will have to stretch out. I'll have to stretch out. Go, 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 go. And good, we took Vienna. That's a giant victory point. An Operation Smash Kiel has actually succeeded. Good, there's a new front for us. But Germany is scrambling. Look at them. The line is empty in certain places. I want to take a Berlin should do it. Nope. Only 5% though. So Bremen, Hanover, Kassel, that should do it. And yes, we did finally manage to link up, but not through Shetin. That still hasn't fallen. And Germany should fall. Perfect. We dictate our own peace. But before I forget, there is something we need to do. For this achievement, we have to be in the Allies. So, let's get in the Allies. Sorry, Tanatuva. Sorry, Mongolia. And the common terms not working out. Disbanded. The Allies should send us an invite. In the meanwhile, though, we'll send Chukacheski to go and deal with Italy. And yes, we're pushing through the pass, but we don't have a choice there. And I was right. The Allies have given us an invite. Yeah, we'll join. We couldn't join the Allies until Germany fell, because joining the Allies would have gotten rid of our collab government. And that's just no good. Oh yeah, I forgot, I have Italy's cipher broken too. Benito Mussolini has just been deposed. That can only mean an Italian civil war is on the way. Oh, what do you know, there it is. So who got the Kingdom of the South? It's me. Of course, the sensible option. <laughs> but oh well, that makes my life a little easier. Keep going, we still need to get to Palermo. Alright, it looks like we're going to have to smash our way onto Sicily. So let's send in everyone. Everyone. Just casually going to overstack that combat width. Oh hey, we could take over the Allies. Let's do it. And that should do it. So, for the achievement, all we have to do is add a demilitarized zone on the Rhineland and Mosland. We'll definitely do that, but let's see what else we can do. I'm definitely going to take some German states. I still have high collab on them. Alright, that should do it. We took 14 states, Czechoslovakia took 3. But most importantly for us, not only has the Rhineland been demilitarized, the whole of Germany has been as well. Hopefully this time, demilitarizing all of Germany will keep some sorts of peace. Probably won't. 
especially when we consider that this DMZ only lasts for five years. I'd say we got a good deal out of this peace deal. We took Libya, we took Italy and Germany's fleets, and of course we have the Soviet Italy puppet. We even took direct control of the Allies as well. Normally at this point the Allies would probably kick us out, but we could kick out Britain if we wanted to. But nah. Nah. No need to do that. However, I think we'll be calling this here. This has been a pretty fun game. Doing the coup again is definitely different, haven't done it for such a long time. I'm still not the biggest fan of it, however it did what it needed to do, so I guess it has its place I suppose. The coup could probably be improved a little bit if they removed its RNG elements, or at least nullified them a little bit. The fact that the coup can fail and there's nothing you could do about it is utterly ridiculous. Why that of all things can't be save scunned is honestly beyond me. However, until next time everybody, I thank you for watching, I do hope you've enjoyed it. Feel free to leave your suggestions in the comments below for future video ideas, I'm always looking for them. However, until we meet again, from me Bubble Zest, doing a guide to the achievement, this time it will stick. And until we meet again, good bye.